Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pearls of Wisdom. We have a question about knowledge and power today with uh, Suchada and Namazit. Okay, go. <laughs> okay. Um, there is that, a statement that people say, like, knowledge is power. Is this true? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. We have to see that generally knowledge, everything, what you know, or what you think you know is a difference. So we have one aspect of knowledge is your personal experience, what you know for yourself. But people, when they talk about knowledge, they talk also about things you read a book or you heard from somebody else or you will see on TV or whatever. Now, see, this is all now mixed together. I would say the knowledge that what you have experienced yourself is power. This is your power because it's your experience. But everything what you get through third part is what you learn and you have not experienced yet is not really power because you don't know if it's true. And I, I would I would suggest like look at truth. What is truth? Truth is something very subjective. Like, for example, again, um, we've been talking about this many times before. Truth has something to do with your consciousness level. This is one. And the second part is also where you are. What is your background um, for you, for your knowledge? Like, for example, the religious background is kind of your truth that you live in this religion or in this society. But this is subjective and doesn't hold. It's not truth. And also, you know, many times also, especially when we look at science, we have um, a finding and they say, oh, this is fantastic. This is like this and like this and like this and be accepted as truth. But then maybe a year later, another scientist comes and, and proves exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's going on all the time. So we have to be very clear and specific about that kind of power, what knowledge is, and really deduct it to what is your personal experience? What is your expertise? That is your power, not what you know from others. But uh, as you said earlier, the the knowledge that is power is the knowledge from our own experience. But we cannot go experience everything. Exactly. So, That's it. So, so I I I got the feeling that the knowledge that we read or we hear or we listen from other source has suppress our courage <laughs> yeah. what do you think about yeah when we go into that knowledge and when we look about the courage so for example the so-called knowledge from a certain society or from a certain religion tells you you're allowed to do this and you're not allowed to do that and so it's a, they automatically see it, fear that this is a taboo you are not allowed. But these are all rules that human beings have made. Mm -hmm. Natural rules are actually what, what, is, what you cannot do is what is a danger to your life, to your person as a, like, for example, if you go in, in a field and you know there are snakes, <laughs> then you maybe uh -huh. have to put down high boots or, you know, when they <laughs> work in the rice fields, what I see now. So this is the kind of danger. But all the other um, danger that is human made in that way is an illusion. And yes, you will not have the courage to do certain things because you are afraid of the punishment behind it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, that is human rule and human dogma. This is how they keep human the ducks in the row, you know. And in a way, that's how they how we are treated to always have and stay in a fear-based consciousness that we always and this is then the 
the knowledge that is not your power, but that destroys your power. Because that knowledge that is the indoctrination, the brainwash of how you have to behave and is deviating you away from your true nature. You have, as a human being, you have an instinct, you have a gut feeling, you have an inspiration, you have an intuition. Once you're aligned with yourself, all these different senses, they work for you. They will give you the knowledge in the moment what you need to know to do the best out of the situation that you are in. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the whole thing that is taking away your courage is all the brainwash, all these rules and regulations that we have to behave in a certain way that we have to eat in a certain way that makes us sick, that we have to do this and that. And uh, all the commercials, all the brainwash, all the manipulation, which is around us all the time, is what is taking away our courage to act, to react, to live, to be spontaneous, to use your intuition. You're always afraid and then another point is uh, also you always have to be afraid what your neighbors think about you or your boss think about you or this person <laughs> think about you. And mm -hmm. this is really, really difficult. I had um, I was somewhere in my 30s at that time. And I, I knew a woman and she said that and, and in, in Swiss German it rhymes. But she said once your reputation is ruined, you're free. To live what you want to live so in a way then if, if if your reputation is gone anyway because you know i was already into all this esoteric stuff and i was kind of this kind of funny woman and she's a witch or what you know kind of stuff like that and she just laugh and tell me you know once your reputation is gone you can do whatever you want and this mm. is true in a way as it might sound brutal but once you have your reputation in the mass is gone, they don't mm -hmm. pay the same attention to you anymore. And if, if they think, oh, she's a little bit crazy or whatever, you can do what you want. <laughs> it's true. That was a very, very big liberation for me at that time. So when you mention like for the knowledge that we should learn is, I, I, I would summarize as the survival knowledge we can learn you know like like when you say the fire is hot you should not like jump in the fire or <laughs> okay, just go yeah. fight you you should not like go out in bare feet yeah. um besides those survival knowledge um what is the knowledge that would be like the type of true power to our that lead to power hmm. The knowledge that leads to power. Ah, yes, yes. Well, you know what? That knowledge comes from within. Mm -hmm. Once, once when, when you are really connected with the divine within, you will have that knowledge within you in any moment when you need to do. Because now, you know, our human being, our physical body is an entity that is separate from the rest, right? But then already we have, first we have a body aura that comes about two centimeters above the skin. Then we have another aura and another and another one. And at one level, this is what people talk about. We're all one. We are connected with the oneness. And I want to define that now in a moment to, so people understand better that what we are all one is life. Every one of us has life within ourselves, and that makes us a human being here. I am a, a, a being of life in this human body. Mm -hmm. The moment I enter that body, that body comes alive. The moment of what they call I die, this is the moment that I, who I really am, leave that body, that body falls apart. Now, on all different levels, there is information. The aura contains information. 
And like you have already information from your body, for example, the body aura gives you information, for example, I'm hungry, I'm whatever. This is, um, this gives you an information that has to come from somewhere because the muscles or whatever is in the stomach does not talk. It has something to do with the subtle body that give you an information, now I'm hungry, or I have a pain or something that is connected with the aura of the body. Then we have an emotional and mental level where we are connected. And our emotional level or aura is not just with ourselves, it's connected also with emotional auras from others or mental auras for others. That's why you suddenly have an idea, for example, like you see a person and an idea come to you that on one level, like for example, on this mental level, you're connected with the aura of that other person and you pick up an idea from that other person or an emotion from that other person. Mm -hmm. And we can even go higher up in, in higher levels where everybody and all is connected. So if we would start to... Uh, instead of looking outside, uh, physically outside for information and ask others, ask our inside that is connected with all these layers of aura. We also know part of it as uh, Akashic records where everything is stored. You can get any information you need, anything that ever has been experienced. That is what then people call psychicness. Uh, I mean, we're all psychic. <laughs> That's part of us. But it's like somebody um, is, for example, very good at running and has his muscles because he trained his muscles to be a very fast runner. Or somebody's a very good musician and plays an instrument because that person trains to play that instrument. And the same is like this. If you learn and train your psychic abilities, you will receive more and more and more information. Everything what you have learned from books, from other people, from teachers, from third parties, is the experience from the other one that might not be relevant for you. But uh, even what you said in the beginning, Suchada, about the fire. When you're a child and you burn your fingers one on the fire, you have to do that only once and you know. <laughs> and it's again the same with other experiences. Again, we have not been on the planet only once. And when we move to higher levels of consciousness, to the subtle realms, you are also connected with your past lives and their experience from past lives can flow into your life that for example you suddenly know something that you have no reason to know it you have never experienced it in this lifetime that comes from inside that is more powerful this kind of knowledge than the one you gather outside because that is changing all the time because it is the experience of somebody else so actually we don't have to know everything no so the knowledge that okay if i come here in in, in this body there is a soul mission that i need to accomplish so yeah. i once i can connect i would know only the essential topic the necessary one you definitely do, but you can also know more if you like to. It's like when you go to university and you have a major, but you can have also minors. So, mm -hmm. for example, like you study law, you can also have maybe a, some minor in art or some minor in music or whatever. That does not mean you have to go just like this, you know. There is more and it is sometimes you can see some people, you can see in the horoscope very easy. Some people, they have all the planets more or less on the same side. And they are very, very focused on something. But then they have people, they have them all over the place. They are more scattered, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And this is a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and when the world outside is still spinning and rolling and the values that are the values speed of who knows more or who knows faster where would this lead to you know again that, that's that's um that's about what you make out of it the world uh is a part of the world is like the masses, um, the um, what what the whole the whole energy of all humanity, positive and negative, is always um, is coming out, and you can choose in which energy frequency you want to participate. So, like the world, uh, yeah, is spinning and rolling in the moment, and uh, what are values? You know, you look again. The values right now that we had are falling because the values that most people had were connected with outside life, mm -hmm. with like what you have, not who you are. Mm -hmm. Or what what you are in a in a way of knowledge of education. But this is something that you have memorized. This is not something that you are. For example, you go in the morning, you go to your job, and in the, in the job, you're a different personality as if you stop your job and go home and you are yourself. So you go and you play a role. That is not natural. We naturally play different roles, as we see in the horoscope, as I said before, that we have different uh, roles that we play. For example, I also at one point I, I was a mother and, and uh, then you are married, you're a lover, you're a mother, you're uh, a wife, a husband, whatever. These are natural roles that you play and you bring in yourself. But for example, then if you go into a business and do something that you have learned because you have to make a paycheck, you step into another role that might not be authentic of who you are. So whatever the world is rolling and spinning and faster, whatever, what is happening now is that all these um yeah, this falls uh, falls apart. Everything falls apart because you cannot catch up. And the more it is spinning and rolling, the more all that what does not belong to you really goes away. It's like when you spin something very fast, you know, for example, imagine the salad. You have the salad washed in this, um, and it's spin and the water is drained away. So I had that image. It's a little bit like that. So everything what is not you, what is not salad, <laughs> is, is, is spinning away, you know. So when we still have to live in this world and we have still have to work and we still have to, you know, try to, I don't know if we need to try, if we need to catch up with the fast moving, then... How can we get connect to the true knowledge that we need, we truly need? How how can we get connect with that or where can we find that knowledge? This is kind of very, very difficult to explain also because it is outside of our imagination. Because see, most people have been um, trapped so much in this picture how we should be and what we should do that we completely lost the connection to our true nature and this is actually what will happen now in the time like what you can see already what it starts happening that all these dogmas that we have believed in are falling apart and suddenly everything looks different i mean just look at the at the topic of energy at the topic of healing, of health, of all that, this is this is all falling apart. And people start to re realize that what we have been brainwashed into is not what really is. It is made artificially, and that's also the next step. You know, go into even uh, melt the human with artificial particles to uh, for for the control. But we have now two different kind of human. We have natural human and we have um, 
yeah, not natural human anymore that are already working or functioning from an outside program, not anymore the inside divine core, that program of who we really are. And you will see that it's very difficult to understand in the moment that whatever was the success in the past will not be the success in the future. And and first, before you can really understand what's going on, you have to let go of the old. So in this transition phase that we are now, like really that going up and down and forth and back, there is insecurity. You will see in the future, in that timeline, that the jobs will be different, that we will not work anymore so many hours because uh, the whole energy situation is completely different too. So the life quality will be more important in the future and, and it will not be based on money or on, on physical substance. Mm -hmm. It will be moving into a quality of life and it will be good. But how long that will go and how difficult the transition is, is depending on each individual also uh, how how willing are you to let go of the old habits? Mm. Remember, I was always uh, recommending um, to learn to f to drop habits. Stop eating every day the same. Stop eating like, for example, every morning the same or whatever. <laughs> Start to vary, to let go, to learn to let go of habits. Mm -hmm. Why you laugh now, is it? Because I <laughs> eat the same food every morning. Yeah, okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's most okay. people do that, you know? Yeah. And I have a right too, and I, I, but sometimes it's really difficult when you have something that you're really comfortable with, you know. But still, uh, it's 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 a it's um an exercise that you learn to let go of habits. Try try it. Um, and when we were fed since birth that education is key success factor and everyone must go to school everyone mm -hmm. must learn more and know more how can we escape this knowledge is power we have been in this the system of education um for a couple hundred years you know when when there was also school was created and the school was actually created because to program people to make them better workers better slaves whatever to give out the program how we are supposed to behave and that that was in different varieties before school or non-school before before school there were other rules and regulation but always it was like the people have been put in that frame that's where you behave and that was connected with the negative um energy of humanity of the whole planet that was you know you know also the old prophecies of uh, that we would have been destroyed in 2012 this time it would have been fire and the consciousness level of humanity has risen so this did not happen so we are now still in the same process and it has to move and it has to move into a different paradigm but it's moving different than uh, not everything is being destroyed. So instead of we die in a big catastrophe, we have now to kind of die slowly, let go part and part and part. But we do not have to start at the beginning anymore, like um, having nothing left in an earth, a charred earth that is just like burn everything and we have to build it up all again. So, but we still have to let go the negative and the everybody who is born today wherever you live you are still fed that old paradigm and still going on 
But the more people that awake, the more will realize that this is not working anymore. We will have school in the future also, but we will have different school and people will learn what they want to learn. There are several schools. Remember that Steiner School, Waldorf School, was also one of those first ones that has shifted, that they um, look at the need of a child and the talent and, and, the, and they support the art because art is creativity and what we have to support in humanity is the creativity because if you um, support creativity then for example one person has the creativity in the direction of engineering and other person has the uh, creativity in the direction of cooking or sewing or whatever. So once you see what is um, the creative ability of the person you start to support that, then this person automatically can develop the talents they really have. And then they are also happy to do it. Mm -hmm. So this whole system is still in the moment, it's all brainwash. Everybody, like the whole class, learned the same, blah, blah, blah. Of course, there are certain life rules that everybody, um, that, that are the same for everybody. Uh, by the way, when you mentioned about the, the our talents, yeah. uh, if, if we want to find uh, our talents uh, so we can connect our device and ask them, ask our divider that what is our talents. You don't right? have to. You know, if you have a child, then mm -hmm. that child will naturally express interest. Mm -hmm. Like some, some are really interested to, you, they have, you know, the Lego, the Lego uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Like, uh -huh. for example, some are really fascinated by that, but some others like, when I was a child, I was really interested in cooking at that time. I was very good at that. And my mother then at one point bought me a little a little stove, you know, with two two hot things. And I was I remember for mm -hmm. me the the biggest thing is when I could get an egg and a little bit of milk and make a very small little pancake. Uh -huh. Stuff like that. So the natural um, abilities that somebody has as a child, they come forward and then they expand. Of course, later I had more interest in other things too. But, uh -huh. you know, the first thing that comes up with children, if you start to support them in them, then they can unfold their personality and become more and more and more. Instead of putting a frame around them, this and this and this you have to learn, you have to do. And that mm -hmm. will be the future. And then it will be easy because people will be able to do what they are happy to do. Of course, there might be still some works that we need to clean a toilet or whatever. But then this is just a necessity that, okay, we do it, you know. But it's not that one person has to clean toilets every day, every day, everywhere. And just do the kind of shitty work, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we will also have a much, much further evolved technology. And we have then a lot of things that we have um, that are natural for us, you know. Okay. It is so difficult to explain and so difficult to understand because we are all still within the old paradigm somewhere about what is reality or but how can I survive if I have not the big whatever job it will be different yeah yeah because yeah yeah because I I, I found that uh, my talents is uh, uh, playing soccer but okay. but it's not, <laughs> yeah but, but because I, I like to play in soccer when I was young uh, and I I thought that it was my best things that that I, I I I do I can do and and but it's not our it's not my career I cannot earn money from from soccer so sometimes I think that uh, even though I know my talents but I I I don't know how to 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 grow it to grow this, it. this is this is just one side like for example whatever sports. 
whatever sport career that is also connected with a certain age mm -hmm. like you cannot play, be a soccer player whatever with 50 or whatever anymore that is a certain part so you will not develop only one thing but for example if you are really you want to do that a career in soccer and you play soccer for maybe till you're 30 but in beside you cannot play just soccer every day all mm -hmm. hours everything so you have things beside and maybe in this intent i just say a number now 10 years that soccer is the main topic of your life but beside i just say you you maybe play piano just something mm -hmm. else no so for example you have an education you learn to play piano maybe you also make a degree in the, as a piano teacher and then once the, you you decide that uh, you're done with playing soccer, you maybe start to open up a little piano school and, and you go maybe you, before you already play piano, for example, in an, in, in an orchestra or whatever. So you keep doing that. And instead of having the main focus on playing soccer, you maybe teach children to learn piano or something like that, you know, just to give you a sample. Mm -hmm. okay. but then we go with our talents and of course say for example uh, we are living in a community right and we still have some part of community service that we do that might not be 100% my talent or whatever that's just part of life that we like as I said still have to clean the toilet for example so we still have some community service that we do, but we do it happily because we are happy. We are not surprised and every day locked into an office we don't want to be or every day uh, having to do work. What is just for the paycheck, but not really what we like to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and by the way, I, I just come up with one question. Okay. Uh, there is a there is a thin line between the the talents and the things that I I like to do. For example, I like art, painting, drawing. Yeah. But when I when I do it, I I was I was learning. I I have been learning drawing for ten years. Yeah. But I think that I cannot do it well. You know what I mean? Because yes, yes. It's not because uh, it's not. I I cannot draw it beautifully. Uh, even though I like it, I like the art, but but sometimes I don't have like uh, the sense of the the art. Mm -hmm. So so it means that it's not the talent, but it is it is uh, the the things that a I interest in. Ah, yeah. Yeah, sure. But you I, know, this is also something by you judge. Why oh. do you think it's not good? Because it might have, you might have somebody who really like the way you do something. Not just because an art critic would say yeah, it's not good enough or whatever. Okay. This I is, just again, myself. this is taste. You know, for example, uh, you like a red t-shirt. I like a white t-shirt. Or, or I wear blouses, you wear t-shirts. Whatever the heck. This is, again, this is judgment. To somebody you oh. might do a, a drawing something and as somebody uh say for example everybody make a drawing and we put it all out there and, uh, if if all people go outside and look at it i'm sure you find somebody who said oh that's a nice drawing you know that somebody mm -hmm. has an affinity for exactly what you are doing we are so one-sided we are so limited with everything really like that Mm -hmm. mm. we cannot even imagine that like certain talents we have could be beneficial for somebody else or for example uh, i know one guy who is actually when you say about painting he is not very good at painting but he's a fantastic teacher uh -huh. he makes artists he makes fantastic artists because he can exactly help others to bring their talents out that is very very um satisfying for him you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because once i i try to teach my my grand uh, my, my my nephew uh, mm -hmm. to, to draw mm -hmm. and that was good right 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they like it. <laughs> and that's the point. I, yeah, at, at that time, I try to inspire them to get their talents out for the art. Uh -huh. See, for example, when you are not an artist to really do that, but you might be very good in materials and in, in, in details. So you can help people with details, like, for example, to explain how how he can work with different materials to make different effects. And mm -hmm. and this is not that maybe you are not uh, skilled very much in in um, uh, say nature drawing or but you might be very much skilled when you do for example geometry like sacred geometry mm -hmm. and or like yeah. you know like also to to learn how to to put things into a nice uh, perspective or things like that. We are so mm -hmm. one-sided that looking everything, it has to be like this, it has to be like that. It's not. So okay. be more flexible, mm -hmm. more open, so that the cosmic law within each person can manifest itself, can unfold itself to become a talent. Because I'm sure you have never really pursued it because you were focused on your career to make money. That's what people are. So you have no idea what would unfold if you were free to completely just let it go. Mm. I think our generation was like, mm, we were made a photocopy. Of yeah, our, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, our mind, yeah, yeah, our yeah. goals, what's important in life. It's just like we were ripped off our individuality yeah. to like a copy, copy, copy paste. Yeah, exactly. Mm. They look at art in Thailand and in, in other countries uh, too. What is allowed to be art? They have many, many. I think centuries, art has only been allowed in religion. Mm -hmm. I remember at the night bazaar in the beginning, most of the art, the drawings, they were all, all Buddha's images of Buddha's or religious images of temples, whatever, nothing else. And that's again, that's again the story. It was that frame. Mm -hmm. And now imagine if you are let loose, let wild to... to um, unfold your talents that maybe start with a little grain like a seed you know you have no idea what plant can grow out of it oh maybe this is the cosmic law that they will they, they have framed this this culture to make us crap and so we have to break through exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's it. That's the fuzzy. That that's power. Wow. And then this is your knowledge. This is your personal knowledge, experience, power. Now you hear the bird. Did uh, you hear now when I said that? Yeah. <laughs> outside of the window. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, huh? Okay. Yes. Okay, so uh, that was a good one, huh? Yeah. Very... So let's break loose, huh? It's coming. <laughs> break loose. Let's find our own knowledge yeah. instead of like keep reading. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or listening. Yeah. And then be happy, be powerful, be knowledgeable in, in what you do and not something just that you heard from somebody read somewhere or whatever. No. That's mm. it. Yes. Okay. Wow. Thank you very much. That was some very good questions today. And uh, for you who watch it, thank you very much for watching our video. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up. And um, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Have a great day.